Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're going to take a look at using two compressors on your guitar signal. Now there are a couple different pedals on the market at this point that allow you to do this very easily. We're going to take a look at those two pedals and also talk about some of the advantages of using two compressors simultaneously. So to begin, what a compressor does is it basically turns down the signal when it passes a certain threshold point. This means that we push the peaks down, meaning we can turn the lower level signals up. That gives us the effect of more sustain, and it gives us much more even dynamics as well. Again, it helps to control those peaks and really bring all that under control so we can maintain headroom, get a bigger sound with longer sustain. But one of the limitations is if you set your compressor up to just catch the, say, biggest peaks, it's not going to compress the rest of the signal. If we set it up so it compresses more heavily, so it does more of the signal, then things might start to sound a little bit squashed. So what we want is a balance in between there, and you could certainly achieve that with one compressor, but another way to look at doing it is using two compressors. One set up to do one part of the compression effect, if you will, and the other set up to do the other. Now we can also cascade two compressors together to give even more apparent compression effect, even more sustain, and other different textures as well. So let's take a look at how this works. To begin, let's check out the UAFX Max from Universal Audio. This is a brand new pedal. It contains two completely separate compression circuits, as well as a built-in preamp and EQ that emulates the legendary 610 tube preamp EQ from Universal Audio. So we've got our preamp gain control here. We can drive that up to get the effect of tube saturation from a studio preamp. And then we have two compression circuits, and each of those has a choice of three different types of compressor that we can choose. The first is the Guitarist Standard MXR Dynacomp. This compressor is a very simple unit as far as controlling it. It just has basically two controls, and you can set it up to get that Nashville chicken picking sound. You can use it as a boost. You can use it to even out your dynamics. So despite being very simple, it's very versatile as well. The second selection is an LA-2A. Now this is a studio rack mount compressor from Teletronics. It basically uses an opto cell, so it's a little bit warmer sounding, a little bit smoother sounding. It's very popular on bass, very popular on vocals. It also works well on guitar. A little bit more subtle compression if you use it that way. You can also crank it up and really squash things, of course. It's also very simple. We have an input control that sets a threshold or where the compression starts to take effect. And then we have a selection of two different ratios, lighter compression or really heavy compression. With the Max pedal, we have a lot more options than that, as we'll see. Our final compressor type that's available is the 1176. Now this is a very famous FET or FET compressor. You've heard this countless times on studio recordings. It's certainly a classic from Universal Audio and Bill Putnam, the original founder of the company. Now this is also the compressor that, for example, Lowell George used on his slide guitar tone. He'd cascade two of those 1176s together to give him incredibly long sustain and that really fat tone that he was known for. Legend has it that Jimmy Page also used two 1176s cascaded together on Led Zeppelin IV for some of those saturated tones. So let's take a look at how this works with the Max pedal. We've got two different compressors, and we can individually switch those on and off. Depending on which one you have active, the controls are now affecting that compressor. So we're on compressor one, the controls would set its settings. If we turn that off, turn on compressor two, now the controls would affect that setting. So let's go back to compressor one. We have our Dynacomp at the top. Let's clean that up just a little bit. In this case, we've got our preamp gain, so we can set that for fairly clean. We can crank that up. You get more saturation if we like. Let's bring that back down. Compression basically determines how heavily we're compressing the signal. We're squashing it fairly heavily right now. We've got an output gain control. And in the case of the Dynacomp, really the only thing that's active on the bottom is the ratio control. There's no attack and there's no release controls on that particular compressor. We have three color LED here. Green means that we have minimal or no compression. When it goes orange, we've got light compression. And when it goes red, we've got heavy compression. So we're not actually overloading, we're just compressing very heavily. The classic MXR Dynacomp tone is very heavily compressed to give you that chicken pick and pop. Which also gives you very long sustain. Now if we switch to the LA-2A, the original LA-2A would have a 4 to 1 compression ratio, which means that as the input changes by 4 dB, the output only changes by 1 dB. That's that compression in action. It's compressing down those dynamics. 
In this case, we do have a release control that's actually not on the original. The release sets how quickly the compressor lets go of the signal after it's been compressed. You can hear with basically the same settings, we don't have as much of a grab there to that compressor. It's more open, a little more subtle, a little bit warmer. Now we can increase the compression amount. That's really making the sound bigger. Bypass with the compressor. Our final choice is the 1176, and again, that's that famous FET compressor. In this case, we do have the attack control that sets how quickly the compressor clamps down on the signal. If we have a slow attack, the pick attack will actually get through. It'll give us good articulation. If we have a fast attack, it's going to grab hold of that pick attack and compress it down as well. Let's turn that down a little bit. Now, if we turn up the compression ratio, that determines how much we're compressing the signal. So four to one for every four increase on the input, we get one increase on the output. Right now I'm at 12 to one, which means we have to go up by 12 dB on the input to get one on the output. You can hear what that does to our apparent sustain. Now if we bring up the attack, There's a lot of different textures there just with the three different types of compressors we have and working with those. But it gets exponentially more versatile when we add in that second compressor. So we've got the exact same thing under compressor two. We've got the same three types of compressors, all the same controls, and we can set them up however we like. The beauty of this is that we can combine the two of those together. When we do that, this switch here in the middle determines which one is being affected by the controls. So right now, when I turn the knobs, it's actually affecting compressor two. So let's set that up sort of like this. Get that down here, four to one. Compression ratio. We're on an LA two style compressor. Now if I go to comp one here on my controls, let's set up sort of the opposite. Here with this, we'll set up more compression there. You saw how long it took for the compressor to actually let go there on that compressor too. There's a lot of compression happening there and a ton of sustain, and the sustain level stays nice and even as it holds the notes out. Fantastic for leads, fantastic for slide guitar playing, but also for ambient kind of things where you want long sustaining chords. really has the effect of maintaining a consistent level with the guitar and a long, long sustain. The Max also has other features as well that we can incorporate into all this. As I mentioned, it has an emulation of the 610 tube preamp built in. The gain control is here, but you can use the UAFX control mobile app to actually adjust the EQ. There's a high band, there's a low band. We also can go in and change the way that the compression is set up. In this case, compressor one is feeding into compressor two. Using the app, we can switch it so that the two of those are working side by side rather than cascading into one another to doing a parallel compression kind of thing, which is a little bit different type of an effect. Might be a texture that you want to use for certain things. So that mobile app, which connects by Bluetooth, increases the versatility of the Max pedal even more. I've switched over to another compressor here now. This is the Cali 76 Stacked Edition from Origin FX. Now it contains two complete analog discrete circuits from 1176 style FET compressor. So we've got two of those simultaneously inside the uh, Cali 76 stacked edition, and one feeds into the other. Now, this gives us a lot of versatility because there's an extra control here that allows us to determine how much of the first compressor is feeding into the second. You may also be familiar with the slide rig from Origin FX. That also contained two 1176 style FET compressors, but it didn't offer quite as much control as the stacked edition does. So this does give you additional versatility. Now the features here include those two 1176 compressors. We also have a dry control knob. This allows us to blend some of our dry signal back in along with the compressed signal. So we can compress really heavily to get that big fat long sustain, but then we can mix in some of the dry 
to ensure that we're maintaining sparkle and that we still have the attack in our signal, that it still has dynamics. We've got a master output control, we've got an input control, and that determines how hard you're driving the first compressor in the chain. Each compressor has its own attack and release control, and then we have the through control, and that determines how much of the first compressor is feeding into the second. So by balancing that input control and that through control, we can get a lot of different effects. We have two different LEDs here on the front, two separate LEDs that indicate how much compression is happening on each of the two stages of the compressor. So if we increase, number one, I've got a fairly slow attack and a fast release. Let's set our through down here. You can see we're only getting compression on the first compressor. Nothing happening on the second because our through control is turned down. Now if we bring up that through control, we'll now feed compressor one into compressor two. I've got that set for a fast attack and a slower release. Now if we drop our dry signal out so we're just hearing the compressed signals, you can hear we're really squashing that. But when we bring that dry signal back in with a compression underneath, we get a nice tone. Still has all that sustained from the compression. So again, very versatile but a little different approach than the Max pedal because this is entirely in the analog domain and it doesn't offer us as many different choices, but what it does is it gives you a lot of versatility for utilizing those two compressors to work on separate parts of the signal for different parts of the dynamics or to work together to really grab hold of things. And having that parallel compression built in with the dry control gives us even more versatility. So there you have it. Two different ways to achieve dual compression using a single pedal. We looked at the Cali 76 Stacked Edition from Origin FX that does everything in the analog domain, gives us two 1176 style compressors that we can utilize together to get those Lowell George effects, those Jimmy Page effects. And then we have the new UAFX Max from Universal Audio that's super versatile. Three different types of compressors for each of the two compression stages that you can combine together to mix and match, plus an emulated 610 tube preamp with EQ. It's a super versatile pedal for setting up dynamics, for achieving special effects, for maximizing your sustain. There's a whole lot going on here with the Max pedal that you can use to achieve the tones that you want. In either case, wonderful pedals that will give you a great sound for your guitar. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.